All right, this is Gucci Boy. Scott Digital. Six. And you're watching High Thoughts TV. to be Scott Simmons. I came up with that name because of Travis Scott and like my favorite actor, J.K. Simmons. But like Gucci Boy was like a nickname mainly and then I was tired of Scott Simmons and I just changed it to Gucci Boy and it just stuck and I've just been rolling with it. So yeah. Honestly, yes, because before I started making like this aesthetic ambient music, I was like a boom bap rapper. So like Mike Miller was like a huge influence and you know like Schoolboy Q and T E and most of that people. But it's gotta be faces, hands down. Faces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we would actually consider ourselves as part of the sad boy movement since since we were like teenagers, man. Yeah. Yeah. I started making music because of Young Lean, really. Travis Scott and Young Lean. So yeah, Sad Boy's movement, definitely. Shit. Shit. Probably something on Unknown Memory. I think Don't Go. I don't know if y'all know that. But it's on his, I think that's his second album. And then his new shit I really like. But yeah, we're, we're really a part of like the Sad Boy's movement. It's been our like, go-to. For inspiration and stuff like that. Probably gotta be either in between my first album, Graveyards, and XOXO. Those are like neck and neck. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't disagree with religion. I mean, I, I come from a Catholic family, but it's not like pushed on us so we can, like, oh, like we have to go to church every Sunday. Nah, but it's just a. Uh, I guess it's just an aesthetic that I guess we accept because of like Suicide Boys, like, you know, money is a devil, shit like that. So we just. Just something to get people's attention. To. Yeah, just something to get people's attention. We just roll with it. Shit, I think like six months ago, I, I messaged him on SoundCloud and I told him I liked his shit. And then, like, uh, I think a month later, we made a song, something like that. And then I joined the group like three months later. Yeah, like, because I started the group uh, called DGB2001, oh, yeah. and you say you had the same group, yeah. right? you had a group called Digital Boys, and I also made one with my name, Scott Digital. And at the time, I was like, I was like, damn, who is this guy with the same name and shit? I was like, this is stupid. And then, like, I was like, well, he has more followers, so I'm going to take my shit off. And then I was just like, all right, I'm going to join the group, because we had similar vibes already, so it just worked out. And we lived in Houston, guys. Yeah, like after we like, I guess we clicked. We worked uh, uh, until it was like my third or fourth EP called Medicine. It's probably like my most successful EP. But yeah, I got him on a track. We I produced the whole thing and it worked out fine. And, you know, became friends, joined the group, We're like a dynamic duo. There's a, my middle name's Scott. Uh, my real name's Kaden, but um, I got the digital from Thai Boy Digital from uh, Young Lean. I guess that's Thai Boy too. But yeah, I had multiple names before that. I should remember, I had multiple names before that, didn't really stick, so I was just like, I'm gonna use that. I just kept it. I think my biggest bad habit is like, I overthink stuff. Like, like, I, like I've been planning for like an album at the end of November, November 30th, I think. And like, sometimes I overthink because I think I scrapped that album idea like four or five times. So like I reproduce beats, rework ideas like four or five different times. So it's just a it's, it's a really bad habit because then like at the end, I'm just like drained out and like sometimes I can't get ideas out. So then I'm just like ah whatever fuck it and I, like that project will never come out like ever again. 
Yeah, that's perfectionism for you. Yeah, like I produce everything from from scratch, unless it says otherwise. But yeah, I, I produce everything on my own. My funniest high moment, it's got to be probably when I was in high school. Because uh, in high school, we used to skip and, like, go under this bridge. And, like, we would just smoke. And I think the funniest high moment is that I fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep under the bridge with my homeboys. And then this hobo, like, tried to pickpocket us. And we were like, yo, what the fuck? And we just got up and left, went to my McDonald's. <laughs> and it is and it is like lady off like she was gone. And she came inside the McDonald's and like NASA was on the news and she was just running around jumping, trying to touch like the ceiling decorations, yelling, NASA, you're lying to us. NASA, like yo, like we we were so high, we were like yo, like I'm just gonna go home. <laughs> like fuck that. <laughs> I don't know, bro. It just happened. Like we just like I just fell asleep and everybody else zoned out and like the hobo guy scared the living shit out of me, bro. It's wild. <laughs> it was just like a regular. Nah, like you know how like they have like rivers. Like riverbanks, bro. You know the skate park, the skate park by Walgreens. Yeah, it's like a little like bridge where it's like a little bayou. It was dry, so we just went there and and I, we just fell asleep on the ground. <laughs> yeah, it was gone. Oh, <laughs> uh, was weed my drug of choice? Pro- now, probably now. Yeah, it was like when I was in high school, I was like a like. I guess you could say like a hardcore drug user. Like I was on pills and shit like that because of school. It messed me up pretty bad, but you know, even though we're not together, but like my ex girlfriend, like she helped me get sober. And yeah, I'm just trying to go down a better path, you know, use drugs that actually don't fuck me up in the long run. Yes, and I feel that music also helps express your pain because. You know, not everybody has a person to, you know, express what's going on in their lives and what they're thinking about. So, for me, I use it as, like, an escape so I can... Between the artist and the listener, too. Because I feel like if you're the artist, you're making it to help someone with their pain and, like, hopefully they relate and then the listeners, you know, they're getting, like, comfort and shit from that. But also, if you're making it, it can help you as well. Yeah, it really all depends. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have two. That would be like Travis Scott, Young Lee. For me, uh, sorry, Travis Scott, Young Lee, Mac Miller, Lil Soda Boy. And, damn. Probably, oh, Blady. Blady. Yeah. Yeah, so be. For us, we have three similar artists. That's Young Lee, Travis Scott, and Blady. And what are the other two? For me, I honestly grew up on, you know, I'm trying to think, like, actual buildings. My, my very first, like, when I started listening to rappers, mainly, like, J. Cole, Kendrick, and Drake. But I've always liked, like, the type of music, like, like low key chill out music, I guess. So not like not specific artists, but that like type of music, you know, like just low key like uh, I guess drug rap is really what I like more than like But yeah, um, for me, this it's really gotta be my well, it's two. I can't really say one, but it's gotta be my uncle who like who passed away in '09 and my dad. So, yeah, my uncle was like very outgoing. Like he just proved that, cause he came out here with nothing, and you know he became a mechanic, got like a bunch of certifications and stuff like that out of nothing. So that's like what influenced me a whole lot to like, oh, 
I can do it too. Like if I just leave, I can go build myself something. I can build myself an empire with nothing. So yeah, it's gotta be my uncle and my dad. Who do I want my music to reach? I guess I want to reach anybody who loves like a vibe. Like, like, like we were talking about it in the car, and like we love making music too. Where like when it comes on, like you can feel like the emotion, you can feel like the vibe. You know, when the bass line drops. Anybody is, willing, anybody is willing to listen and understand what we're talking about, and hopefully, like maybe they've been through the same things, and they can take something from that. Like the demographic is probably as, as broad as it can be for music. Like as many people as it can reach, the better. You know? Yeah, but that's the demographic we're trying to touch. Hey, well, I mean, me and Eric can go on about this for hours. Egos. It, honestly, honestly, it's egos because um, me, I recently just had two shows. One at Super Happy Funland and one Sunday at White Swan Live. And like the people who came out, those are the people that like actually want to do something together in Houston. And you know, and it was real supportive. Like you could feel the energy. Like everybody was, you know, fucking with each other. But like the people who didn't show up, who claim they're like willing to like work together and do something with Houston, they didn't show up. So, yeah, it's really got to be the egos and, like, I guess, afraid of showing support. Cause yeah. Ain't no love in Houston, man. People don't want to, like, admit their their fans and stuff, too, you know? Like, I feel like if you're a friend with someone who makes music, you don't want to be like, oh, I'm a fan of you. Or, like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's basically egos. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. It's just, and I guess people are afraid of the image to make them look like, you know, they're groupies or, like, super fans just because they can recite a verse that, like, off their favorite song from a local artist. So... Yeah. Yeah. So I wish, honestly, that we could all just come together one day and just like help each other out. Off the top, off the top, it's got to be for me for Dylan Brady. He's like one of the coldest producers. Like he's produced for like Night Lavelle and you know some Suicide Boy tracks and you know other artists too. But it's got to be Dylan Brady and Mike Dean. Like has. Hands down for me, Mike Dean and Dylan Brady. You? I say, I say, White Armor. He's a producer for the Sad Boys group, and uh, probably Younger, Young Sherman, all of them. They make crazy shit. So. Yeah. Female. Damn. My ex and my hoes are gonna kill me. But, anyways, um, I mean, I guess I don't have a perfect female, honestly. I really not. Well, honestly, honestly, bro, like if if they just got like, I guess like a nice ass or a nice pair of tits and a good personality, I'm straight, bro. Like that's that's all I'm looking for. I'm serious. You can find. I'm serious. You can find like the baddest bitch on the planet, but their personality is trash, bro. Like you can't even spend. Five minutes. Like literally, like mentally, just not there. Like I don't even know, but yeah, like they'll talk about dumb shit, and the guys are like that too. But like I don't know, but yeah, if I had to build a perfect perfect woman, it'd just be like uh, I don't know, <laughs> just not not a bad personality, and yeah, whatever my preference is that night, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we really don't have like super high standards as long as your personality is really trash. <laughs> Wait, you say would I fuck a girl from a show? Like our show, like groupie. Like a groupie? I mean, I don't know, like, because I know some deadly groupies that are like crazy. So I'm, I might take a second guess, but I mean, yeah. Well. Ah, uh, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah let's be honest. You, you, you you're you not gonna be thinking straight, bro. Yeah, it's true. I was like a big glass person when I started, but I guess 
blunts and uh, papers are cool. But yeah. I don't give a fuck as long as I get high. <laughs> as long as you get high, man. Uh, it's got to be because uh, of Mac Miller's uh, Diablo when it came out on SoundCloud. Like, I'm going to be honest. Like, I can actually say I own my success so far is because of Mac Miller. Because I gained my first couple thousand plays rapping on Mac Miller's Diablo. Yeah, like, yeah, like, mad long ago, like, no, I just remixed it, like, it was just a beat, and I spit, a, I spit my own verse over it, and, like, people started catching on, and were like, oh, like, this is fire, and people started playing on the ox, and I was just like, man, so, yeah, Mac Miller's Diablo's gotta be the reason why I picked up the pen. Stockholm, Sweden. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm a- but honestly, like let's be honest, bro. Stockholm, stock yeah, Stockholm, hands down, Sweden. Um, because our like our huge, like you know, because we're quote unquote on the sad boy movement, I guess. Was well, because of Young Lean and like. Plus, I've been in like the heat and like. We're here for so long. I just want to go somewhere cold, just to like relax. Like, like, cool. If I had to stay in the U.S., though, I'd probably just go to LA, honestly. Even though everyone does that shit, just to like see what it's like. But yeah, it's gotta be Stockholm, so yeah. No, they can get bitch. So yeah, it's, it's, true. it's like around six people, and we're, we're the only Houston artist here at the moment. Well, we have another Houston artist. He, well, he's from Houston, but he's currently in Atlanta. His name is Baby McGrady. And another artist we have is in Chicago. His name is Wake Up Shorty. And another artist from Florida. Look, his name, his name originally was Child, but he's, you know, trying to find his true self, and he changed his name to Kamisha, and, yeah, it's, it's hard, because, like, because certain names, it just makes it hard for people to look up, so I guess that's why he changed it, and we have a designer in the group, his name is Astralities, and yeah, bro. Bro's like, how old, how old is he? He's like 16 and he's like making bands off his clothing. Like, I wish I was 16 and I was making bands off his uh, off of clothing, man. Like, he's snapping, bro. Like, he's really out here. Honestly, like, the whole purpose of the group that I started <coughs> back in 2017 was to. Because I've, I've been in the game for like a four three years or whatever so I kind of know like the pros and cons of what to do and what not to do because I already went through like the phase of like oh I'm gonna try like scream all rap and I'm gonna try like you know rapping like X and then rapping like Suicide Boys and all that shit so I helped them you know find themselves and yeah I mean, they, they just honestly they run themselves like they they rep the name they rep the group we all work together because we all have like the same vision, but they all they all manage their own music, man. Like, it's it's amazing, honestly, because I used to be in two groups previous to this one, and I honestly was tired of like managing people, you know. Because at the same time, I was making my own music, but at the same time, I was like, I had to be behind and like push them along, and I got tired of it, so. You know, I found, like, a group of people who were like, oh, we can work together, make something happen, make something pop. But at the same time, I don't have to check in to find out, like, yo, are you making music still? Or you're just using up our resources and, like, our connections and stuff like that. But not everybody, I produce my own music, but everybody else, well, Scott is starting to produce now. And... But we all manage our own music. We all mix and master our own stuff. You know, we, we just, you know, 
we can be like, oh, we got a preset, like, for auto-tune. We just send it out, see who fucks with them more, and keep helping each other. That's, you know, DGB for you. Uh, it's, uh, it used to be this spot. I can't remember where it was, but I, because we live, we're in the north side of Houston, but I used to grow up, I grew up over here in A-Leaf, and I remember my dad, he would take us to this burger spot. I think it was a burger spot. It was like Best Burgers. I think it was, and, and, it, I, and when I grew up, it was like in the middle of nowhere, like by a highway. But yeah, Best Burgers, it got like the best fucking burgers. <laughs> you got the best fucking burgers I ever tasted, man. You? Uh, mine's like this taco place downtown. It's like near the medical center, I think. It's called like Tacos A Go Go. Sometimes you've been there for it, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Man. Um, I'm, um, I think all my talents are like music related. I don't think. Yeah. Oh yeah, well yeah. <laughs> yeah, no game. Yeah, I've been a gamer since I was like three, bro. Like I, like my first con- like my first console was the Sega Genesis, like passed down from my dad. Like my dad had it like in this old Looney Tunes like travel case. And I was like three years old. He just broke it out. We was playing Virtua Fighter. And yeah, like, I'm pretty good at that shit. Yeah, like, yeah, just, I guess just, that's it. But, but my other times, like, mainly, like, music related. Yeah, besides the gaming part. Yeah. Show that you can really glow See me in the hills when the snakes living down